if you're just starting guitar, learning A minor is a great place to be. String two fret one with the first finger. This is the way I pretty much always do it. Finger two goes down on string four at fret two. And finger three goes on string three at fret two to produce this sort of boot shape. I'll just move my little finger out of the way for a minute. Use the tips of the fingers, almost always. Um, get as close to the frets as you can. As you can see here, the second finger won't easily go close to the fret. I could do it, but I'm not going to. I'll just have to press down a little harder. Getting right up close to a fret means that you don't have to press as hard. And uh, that's really important. There are six strings to play in this chord. You wouldn't normally play the open E string. It destabilizes the chord quite a lot. So usually you'll put the root of the chord, which is an A, in the bass. So that's A minor done. Right hand, certainly a good idea to practice strumming with the side of the thumb. And notice the direction of the strum. You go parallel to the frets as much as you can, swinging around by moving the el at the elbow it's going to produce that sort of effect and you can easily miss the top strings by doing that listen out for five clear notes don't hold on to the chord for too long because it's plenty of effort as it is so next thing to tell you is that moving to f major seven or f depending on how you strum it is quite convenient it's a, a simple change Nothing simple until you've learnt it, of course, but the thing that helps is that finger one is common to both chords. So finger one stays where it is. Finger two now goes to string three fret two, where this finger three used to be. And then the third finger goes to string four fret three. So we have uh, the stopped notes, so F, A and C, and that's a complete chord of F major. Adding in the open first string, gives you a chord of F major 7. So if you want that chord, drag all the way through. If you only want F, drag to come to a rest, a stop on string 1. A minor, F. I'm going to use F major 7 because I'm thinking of the song Thank You by Dido here. Now to get to G, the next chord, the shape that you've made with the second and third fingers, if you move across to strings four and five and then across again onto strings six and five and then take the first finger off, you've got a chord of G major. If you strum through with the same stopping on string one idea, then you've got a nice chord of G. If you strum all the way through, you'll have an open first string, which gives you a chord of G6 useful chord. If you listen to the latest Beatles song, it's in there as well. But it's very different, isn't it? So, back to the idea of using the thumb. Or, you could actually just strum 6, 5, 4 and 3. Notice that the speed is crucial to the effect. If you want an Alan a Dale kind of a sound, then go slowly, a little bit quicker, faster, Sounds pretty much like they're being strummed at the same time. And that generally is the effect that we want when we're strumming. Because it provides good rhythm. The common shape between those fingers, two and three, moving across is very, very useful. Always look out for common finger patterns or finger movements. If you want a four chord of G using this fingering I've shown you, then you would take your fourth finger, your little finger, and put it on string one fret three. As you can hear, the addition of the top G there is very significant, as Brian Cox might say. Very significant chord story. Let's move my chin out of the way there, because it will look a bit like uh, one of the Red Dwarf chin heads. So, because of the logic of these fingerings here, it makes sense that if I wanted to do G, I'd use fingers two, three and four. A lot of the time, you'd be using fingers one, two, and three to produce the same shape. And additionally, this version of a G, where string two, fret three is also involved, is commonly used, and it's a lovely chord. 
back to the A minor. So A minor, F major seven, and I'm going to put the open A in there. I don't know whether I want to put the F in the bass or the A. It just depends how we're feeling. C major on Cloud of Bed. We pass through it on the way. Well, after we did F major seven, to get to C major, just move the second and third fingers across to strings four and five. So you'll have a stopped note, stop note, open third string, and a C and an E. The notes in that C major chord here are C, E, G, another C, and another E. Chords or triads are built from three notes taken out of scales. From the beginning, T stone cold, I'm wondering why, got out of bed, back to A minor, at all. There are no more chords to learn. When we get to the chorus, well, let's just continue the verse, A minor, morning rain, clouds up my window, and I can't see at all. So it's the same chord progression, even if I could, sorry, even if I could, it'd all be great. I've got your picture on my wall. So that's the same chord progression three times. A minor, F major seven. It reminds me, back to A minor. It's not so bad, not so bad. Chorus. When you've worked on the verse and it's perfect, or coming along to your satisfaction, then chorus is C, I, just want to thank, thank you. F major seven or F. Repeat, best day of my, give me the best day of my life. I just want to be with you, you give me the best day of my life. There are some changes in the song, but not many, um, and you can ignore them for now. And it still sounds great. Next thing, if you're wanting to not just play to the song, but you want to play it and sing it to yourself, a good method or approach is just to do what I'm doing here with the right hand and only strum on each chord change and, and remember and learn, learn and remember uh, which syllable you strumming on, on, on the chord change. So, like this. Sorry about the buzz. My Steve, my Steve, my T stone cold. I'm wondering why got out of bed at all. And watch out for those. So, my T stone cold. I'm wondering why got out of bed at all. My voice is not warmed up, so it sounds pretty dreadful, but it doesn't matter, does it? So that's a stage towards being able to do some rhythm on the right hand. Um, the next thing could possibly be strumming the beats. My tea stone cold, I'm wondering why got out of bed at all. But that's a big step forward for a lot of people. So um, following Rory Block's advice, just struggle, struggle, struggle and then come back to that another time, another time. But I think knowing when to change and what syllable goes with the change is a great way of keeping yourself in time and, and working towards freeing up the, the hands and your voice so that they become independent and they can play, act together. Um, one little thing, but did you notice, you remember that I did it, I got a buzz and it was the second finger and that was the thing I was mentioning um, I was concentrating on something else and I was being a bit careless and that second finger is a little way back from the fret and the pressure that produces a buzz here which is what I did because I wasn't pressing hard enough is the pressure that produces a clear note so the principle here is whenever you can put the fingertips right up against the fret. If you play on top of a fret, you'll get this sound, a muted sound, and no matter how hard you press, it will stay muted. So watch out for that, just keep listening. So there's a whole load of stuff on Thank You by Dido and on the business of um, doing chord shapes and changes. To repeat, um, don't hold down the pressure and squeeze for too long. When you're learning the guitar, treat it like reps and sets in weight training or athletics or whatever. Um, 
squeeze, relax. Between chord changes, make sure that you've released the squeeze so your fingers are loose for the next chord. Sometimes you can't do that because you want continuity, but for this song, it's fine. Another thing, if I do play the open A string when I'm changing between A minor and F major, or F major seven, the constant ringing on of the A allows you to change chord more seamlessly. The fact that some of these notes have stopped don't matter, doesn't matter so much because the A is ringing on. So it's like having a choir of each string is a voice and one of them singing keeps going through while the others change. So whenever that can be done, if you've got an open string common to, to a chord change, that can help it sound smoother. But if that isn't an option, then the answer to a quick chord change is to relax, let the strings push you back to a starting position. So I'm, I'm on the strings, but not pressing. Lift away vertically, change to the next shape and put it on. And that's a big ask at first. That can be a very difficult thing to do. And sometimes I don't have time to do it. Um, sometimes you can get away by putting the necessary fingers on in order. If, if you're finger picking, absolutely. See there, if I play. As opposed to, you see that I went three, two, one. As opposed to this. When I'm switching those fingers instantaneously, simultaneously. Once it's not instantaneous, but it's close. So bear that in mind. And one more thing, little tip. I do repeat myself a lot. If you want to practice these new chords shapes, um, squeeze, relax, and then point your fingers up. Keep your fingers loose. Think about the shape and then try to find it again. And go very, very slowly because as it's called muscle memory, it's not strictly speaking, that's just sort of like a shorthand, isn't it? Because the memory doesn't reside in the muscles as such. But it is a, a connection you're making between the fingers and the brain. And so you're learning, training a connection, the right neurons are firing the right signals to the right muscle fibres to get the shape. So take your time. I will call it muscle memory. It has to be done slowly. It's the only way to get a consistent um, programming of the fingers. If you do it eight or nine times correctly and then get it wrong, all you're doing is introducing the equivalent of a stammer. And when I get excited, I stammer a bit. Um, so I can't emphasise that enough. When you're learning something, go as slowly as it takes, for example, to get it perfect every time. It's a lot more fun. It's a lot more satisfying to know that your fingers are going to go where you want them to and you're not going to do some fluffy bits. So take your time. I, to this day, take my time when I'm learning something new. I figure out what fingers need to go where, what will be the best fingering. Oh, by the way, one more thing. Some people like to play A minor uh, with the two and three, fingers two and three swapped over, which is perfectly fine. I just happen to not like it. And for me, it's quite often not logical. Uh, there are times some Leo Kotke pieces I play where that definitely is a useful thing to do. But by and large, I find that that makes no sense to me for because most of the chords I'm going to change to from there, uh, it's, it's more convenient and feels more comfortable to keep them that way around. For example, if you're changing between A minor and E major, which is exactly the same shape, but this time the shape is on strings three, four and five. I'm just trying to move my little finger out of the way for you. Then you can definitely work on moving simultaneously. And the point I was trying to get round to is that that shape is far more logical, isn't it? Because if you do it this way round, then there's going to be some finger swapping, finger crossing that you're going to have to do. Now that said, guitar chord changing is all about moving one finger towards the palm or a group, pair of fingers perhaps, and the other one staying where it is or moving away. So for example, a chord of D looks like that. 
recorder C looks like that. And so if you want to do some practice away from the guitar to encourage the independent movement of the fingers, then um, bicycle wheels or by just bicycling, pedalling action or doing it on, a, on your hand or on your, on your leg and going backwards as well is going to really, really help increase your ability to change chords. But out of all the things I've said, probably the relax between the changes is the most important thing. Relax and take your time. And do you notice one last thing? Um, quite often my thumb is poking up over the neck. With the guitar neck being so narrow, uh, this is quite acceptable, I, I think. It's, as long as the fingers are in great orientation and, and the thumb is relaxed and I'm not straining and my wrist is as straight as it can get, then that's okay. But it just, I feel a bit self-conscious when I do it. And unless I'm actually using it to, to play bass notes, which I do sometimes. There are certain times when it works really well and you have to do it. For example, for that. I couldn't do it any other way, I mean. Wouldn't bother. Always go for the way which is easiest. And yeah, if that feels easier to you when you're playing a slow song, okay. But I would argue that getting used to it that way round is logical because of the possibilities that are coming up. Let's show you A minor to D major, for example. If I go slowly, you will see that the second and third fingers have to move away. The first and third fingers are now sharing the same direction of movement, pretty much. So they're moving together that way and the middle finger is moving away that way. So just look out for a logical movement and if there's any chance of retaining the same finger shape, uh, fingers keeping the same orientation, then do because it's a lot easier. E major, E minor, A minor to E minor, brilliant. Right, that's enough. I hope that um, helps you and um, yeah, let's get that chin out of the way and stop. And if you've made it to the end, well done. And I'm supposed to say, aren't I? Please like and share this and subscribe. If you look at my subscriber numbers, it's about 950. So we'll reach the wonderful target of 1000 very soon. And it will result in uh, nothing, but it might feel good to me. Anyway, um, any questions, do send them on YouTube. And uh, yeah, that's it. See ya.